Welcome, welcome. It is Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are back with our summer shorts. So today, we are talking all about walking feet and sort of the accompanying feet that you can find on other machines. So we're gonna talk about why we need to use that and how we put them on your machine. So uh, first, I wanna remind you, please share the video with your friends, your sewing group, all that good stuff. Um, and at the end, we will give away a kit to one of you, one lucky winner who has shared the video. So please share the love, um, especially if it's somebody who has done, who wants to do either quilting or working with cut and or uh, working with cuddle because both of those things really need a walking foot, okay? So make sure you share the video. We'll have a winner at the end, all right? So we always say this in the patterns, and if you've ever attended a class with me, that's always in the supply list is a walking foot, all right? And that's because a walking foot really, really helps to guide your fabric through um, the machine. And it really depends on the machine what kind of uh, walking foot you're going to use. So we have three of them set up here today that we're going to kind of go through. All right. We've got a, um, a brother, we've got a baby lock and we have a Bernina and they all use slightly different feet to do the same thing. So when I say a walking foot, if you show up with a machine like mine, mine actually has a digital dual feed. So it works basically the same way as no, it does the same thing. It doesn't work the same way. It does the same thing as a walking foot. On the Bernina and some other machines as well, you'll have an even feed foot. So we'll talk about that and how those all sort of relate. Okay? So sometimes you're going to show up, it's going to say a walking foot, and you don't actually have a walking foot. You may have one of these instead. All right? So do we need to do anything else before we get started? No, I think we're I think good. that's it. So I've got a little piece of fabric that we're going to sew around all three edges. We're gonna show, I'm going to show you how to set them up. And... Uh, Hawk's gonna get in here nice and close and right, we'll, uh, swing that we'll show them all. All right, and also I forgot to mention, and this is super important this time, is that we're at Patchwork Plus in Dayton, Virginia, and they have been nice enough to loan me a couple of machines here to show you how to do this because it is super important. All right, so all right. we're gonna start over on this guy over here. Okay. Okay, so this, this is your regular foot. All right, just, oops, just a regular old foot. And this is a walking foot. So if you haven't ever heard of a walking foot before, this is what it is. And basically there's a couple of ways that it works. And one is this little bar goes over your needle screw. And then you can see how these relate. All right, this is a little, I never can remember what the right words are for it. Like a little tread sort of thing. It's a little traction right here. Maybe you can kind of see on the side, it's got teeth. Yeah, it's almost like your feed dogs only hit only facing down. Exactly. So they are going to be coming this direction. Your feed dogs are facing up. So basically what it does is it, it feeds your fabric through using both sides. Okay. So we're going to see if we can both get in here underneath the machine and be, show you how to do this. So the big thing I will say, the big thing that people like mess up when they do this is they don't put this little bar over the needle screw. So this little screw right here, that's what needs to go over that. Okay, so All let me right, see if I can, I can zoom in. Okay, and I'm gonna see if I can do this without getting too much in your way. So you can you see this little Yes. That goes over that needle screw, which is always gonna stick out to the side, goes over the shank, and then I'm gonna screw this thing in. All right, this is always the part that's super fun because they always think that it like People have child-sized hands or something. And like this screw, it's funny because I'm not ambidextrous by any stretch of the imagination. So this left screw is always a challenge. Okay. So we're going to screw this on nice and tight. I will say that if you have a little screwdriver that you can use to do this, don't finger tighten it because as it moves, it will definitely loosen up. Okay, so get it nice and tight. All right, there we go. Okay, so the little bar is up here. This is on nice and tight. Make sure that your needle screw is in nice and tight as well. Okay, because what happens when this is moving is it tends to shake this little thing. So then sometimes needles will fall out if it's not really tight. Okay, and that's happened and kind of freaks people out. <laughs> All right, so I can see. There we go, three, 
is what I want. I shifted over slightly, it looks like, and I'm not sure why. Um, okay, so let's give this a try. I need to thread it. I did that. Sorry, not my machine. Do you see a little threading button? I don't see it, but it's got to have one. Because it just had me do all this stuff for it. I don't know. It has me walking through it. I'm just going to thread it. Maybe. Okay, nope. I have to cut it. I need scissors. Hold on. I need to get past. <laughs> I've got a I've got an end that is a little furry. He doesn't want to go through the hole. Okay, there we go. Nice so, work. Thanks. I'm sure there's a button I can push somewhere and I just don't know how to do that. Yet. So. <laughs> well, and it's not my machine, so I'm not going to learn, unfortunately. Um, okay, so now we've got it here. So I want to show you this before, see if we can see it before we start going. Um, oh, you so I want to put... A, you'll need a pedal. No, no, I don't actually. Oh, okay. Because I can do this. Um, so this is the foot up. So this is one thing I want to show you. Foot up, come around to the back so you can see what I'm doing here. So this is my presser, my presser foot lift, okay? And then I can do this. Can you see how much higher it goes up? Yep. Okay, big difference. Most machines now will have this extra lift. So this is super important when we're um, actually sewing with it. All right, so now I'm gonna put this down and we're gonna sew just a little and see if you can kind of see what's happening. So what I want you to do is I want you to, hold on, let me get my stiletto so I can point, is watch these little grips here and watch what they do because they're gonna kind of feed through and we're gonna do this once without any fabric and then we'll do it with the fabric and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna just push the go button because it'll do it. Do you see them going up and down? Yep, let me see if I can get a little more light down in there. Okay, so the feed dogs are working and then these top guys are working too and they're coming down, going backward. All right? Got it. So I'm gonna lift my needle up. Put some fabric under there. So this is that fun thing where I can lift it up higher, get my cuddle underneath there really nicely. And we have this set at a, oops, it's at a 2.5 now. I'm gonna change that to a 3.5 stitch length. And we're gonna let this feed itself through. Okay, and I'm gonna take out my pins. I'm gonna do this thing where I'm gonna speed it up. Okay, and you can kind of see it just pulling the fabric through. So my biggest job right now is to guide the fabric. So if it's struggling at all, I'll always put a hand to the back. We're just gonna try to make sure that it's going straight through here. Okay, so you to totally see that working there. Okay, there we go. Nice little seam. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's check. So this is a standard, a regular walking foot, all right? And that's the way it works is, I always kind of describe it as like, you know, the feet are coming down this way and they're dragging it through together. So they come in, they grab it, they bring both layers at the same time, which is really important. So let's go check out what the um, crescendo does. Okay, so this is the baby lock crescendo, which is also like the, the new chorus is the same way. And it has, and a lot of the um, brother, the higher end brother machines and the higher end baby lock machines have this foot, okay? So this is a digital dual feed or sometimes called a move it foot on brother machines. And I will tell you this, you want it to be down. This means that your traction is going. If you push this up, it takes, it releases the pressure on the belt and makes it so the belt doesn't work. All right, so that's one thing to check if it's not really working for you. I'll show you the other thing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. This one does not have anything to go over the needle screw. So it's different that it just goes on to the shank. So I'm gonna stick that on. 
make sure it's on there nice and nice and flat. And then I'll go back in here with my little screwdriver, tighten that up real good. All right, because that's going to do the same thing where it can kind of shake a little bit loose as it's working because it's really, this is a heavy, heavy thing on here. And if you don't tighten it up real nicely, it might not behave as well as you like. So mm -hmm. then instead of the needle screw thing, we've got this thing in the back, which have I forgotten? Yes. Only recently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this needs to be plugged in to get that belt to work. All right. So that belt is going to come around. Oh, I wonder. No, I don't have it in here. Yeah. Um, I was hoping I had the open toe foot so you'd be able to see it. So basically what's going to happen on this is this black belt down here is going to twist around as we sew and it's going to drag the fabric through at the same time the feed dogs down here are dragging it through. All right. So let's see if, see if that'll work. I'm going to unthread it because I'd rather do it unthreaded. Okay. I'm going to drop that. This one also has the extra lift back here that I can do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. We'll, we'll make that start maybe. Nope. Okay. It says it doesn't want to do it with that foot for some reason. Okay. So this little, this little belt right back here is twisting. You see it? So if I put it here, and drags it through. Yep. All right. <laughs> it's like, you don't have any thread. I know I don't. Okay. So this little belt just keeps moving around and is dragging the fabric through. So let's watch how that works. Okay. This one, I know where the needle is. Or the, you know, the needle threader. There we go. I looked away. <laughs> Okay, I it's right here. I followed the wrong thing. It's right yeah, here. I got that part, but then I didn't actually get to see it through the needle, which is the magic part that I always like. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this down. It is pretty magic when it works, like, and it works every time now. Uh, I, will, I will mention really quickly, though, that you want to make sure that you're using an 80 or larger needle when you use a needle threader. If you use a 70, size 70 needle, it will likely bend it, and that's true of all of them. Okay. So as I go here, you can see I'm just pushing it along here. Like hands free, basically. Hands free. It's going to drag it through. What I really want to do is make sure that I'm guiding it. So the same way that I was talking about there, I can keep my hands here, keep a hand here. I want to make sure that the fabric is staying straight as it comes through. Okay. So I don't keep my hands up here because this really doesn't have any effect over what happens to it, but over here totally does. So I can do all sorts of funny things with it, with my hand in the back. Okay, so that's where I really have the control. So keeping my hand back there is very helpful. All right, but I'm not dragging it through at all. It just helps move it. Okay, all right. You ready for the next one? Let's do it. Okay, so now we're gonna go over and we have the Bernina one. And Bernina uses, they have a walking foot as well. Oh, which, the, is this, the, this is the fancy, right? This is the fancy one. So this yeah. is the B, the 590 crystal edition. It's a beautiful little machine. And so you can get a walking foot for Bernina. The Bernina that I have in my studio back, well, it's not really in the studio. It's at the offices in LA. Um, I have a walking foot for that because I do like the walking foot for it. It works the same way as the one that we showed you for the brother that has a little you know, claws that come down and drag it through. They also have this, uh, which is the even feed. And so it has the special foot and it has some sort of, this is like, uh, I wanna say like an antenna. I'm not sure what, <laughs> but you have to have this foot. So this is the 10 that's used for it. So if you can get in here and show this, Bernina feet are different and that they don't have the shank that you screw on. So it has this little point that comes down and it has a little, um, catcher. Not sure what the right word is for that thing, but that's what I'm going to call it. So basically what I have to do, see if you can come in here and see. I'm trying. Mm. Is this the one that doesn't have a, a foot lift? It doesn't. Okay. So is that, we'll talk. there we go. Okay. So I can get that. So basically I'm putting the little hole that's here. Let me show you. There's a hole. Yep. Okay, and I'm going to put that up over that cone. Okay, hold it up there nice and tight, and then I'm going to swing that down and lock it in position. Got okay? it. Okay, so now that foot is secure. 
Okay. Oh, it went way under the table now. Yep. <laughs> In case you didn't hear that, my stiletto just got away. All right, I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna get it. Don't, me. I don't think you can. It's okay. Okay. It's real far. <laughs> so Not we've got the foot on here. All right, so we've got the foot on. <laughs> Nothing like live TV, uh, That's right, exactly. We've got the 3.5 stitch length, and then I have to come around here to the back. So if you want to come around and show this part right here, this is the magic of the one thing that we always have to remember to do. So we can get this foot on, but unless I do this right here, it's not gonna do anything. So this, I'm engaging the even feed, okay? I can disengage it just as easily, push it down, make it click, and it clicks into the back of the foot. Mm. All right, and what that does is it makes this whole thing move. So let's do a little of that. So I'm gonna put it real nice and slow, 3.5 stitch length, right in the middle. I still have to thread this one too. Okay, so this is gonna bring that foot, it's gonna bring the fabric back. So do you see this little, that little guy right back there? Watch him, he's grabbing the fabric as we go. Okay, so it's just that little tiny thing is grabbing the fabric. All right, so let's show you how that works. This is my foot up. How's that for fancy? Look how high that one goes. Wow. It's pretty good. Thread. Okay. Oh yeah, thread. That's a good idea. I'll be able to prove that I sewed something that way. All right. <laughs> I come around. Thread this guy. Okay, and we'll look at these stitches after we're done and see how they See if and how they vary since they're all 3.5. There we go. And I know this has a needle thread or two and I don't know how it works either. Okay. <laughs> I can only know so much. Okay. So you can see that, that little guy, I can't stick my finger obviously when I'm sewing it, but this little guy right here is pulling the fabric as we go. Okay, so this is one that I'll need the stiletto a little bit more because it's only pulling that little part. So it doesn't have quite as much. It's really, really good for um, uh, quilting. It's moving the cotton along. But what I have found is that the uh, walking foot is a, is a good addition to have because it will drag the fabric through better. Okay, this is exactly what my experience has been otherwise. This is great. Okay, and because it's just a different, um, a different mechanism. Okay, pink, pink. So now I'm gonna have to fix that corner right there. Dang it. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, clip that, and it'll lift it up for me. All right, so this one had, a, this, this one I feel like is a little bit less control and we always tell people they wanna use the even feed and I always tell them use the walking foot the walking foot. So that's why um, the walking foot definitely um, will bring things through a little bit better than just an even feed. Okay, so sometimes when we're in classes, people want to, um, yeah, just bring their even feed and we always do it. So when we do like for um, Road to California, that sort of stuff, we always have them bring the walking feet for these. So right. there you go. So there's the differences. Even feed, come back around. Oops. This is the digital dual feed or a move it foot, okay, which is this big thing here, which drags it through with the belt. And then this is the walking foot. So this is why we recommend a walking foot for everything. So when you have it in your, um, your pattern or in your class supplies, if you have this, it's much, much better. I'm actually, I wanna show real quick, what time are we at? Okay, I'm gonna show you one thing real quick. I'm gonna switch this around so we can show you the difference with just the regular, the regular foot and why we really want to use a walking foot. Because we can see it's kind of the, the better option here. Come on, little guy. Who knew there were so many, what do you call them, threads? And this little bitty screw. There we go. <laughs> Take forever. Okay, I'm gonna switch this so that it's just a regular foot. And what happens here is that this one isn't going to get anything else to help the fabric through. 
Does that make sense? So with the other ones, there's always some little part or some big part, like this is these, you know, these huge feet. Sorry, these huge feet are coming, are bringing that fabric through. On the even feet, it's really just this little part that's trying to do the work. All right, so let me show you what's happening here. Because it's already sewn, I'm not gonna worry about pinning it. Oh. We'll see how this starts to happen. And you see how it starts to push? Okay, so it seems like it'll work okay until it starts to push up and I can see it pushing, pushing, pushing. All right, and that's really where people start to get frustrated when they're trying to sew with minky, with cuddle and not have a walking foot it, because it's all just pushing forward. So you saw when I was doing this with the, with the, uh, I think this is it. Is this the black one? Yes. Okay, so this is the stitching we did before with the walking foot and there was no shove without a walking foot at all. There's lots, okay? Got it. So it makes a big difference to use a walking foot that helps to guide the fabric through. There, you can get a lot of these for um, a fairly reasonable price for most of these machines. They're, yeah, less than $50 and will make a huge difference, okay? All right. So, and that basically, that same walking foot that will work on this machine also works on your featherweight. It works on my featherweight, exactly. So, right. these, so it's a these, universal. So yes, the kind of there's a generic kind of walking foot that works on a lot of basic machines. And like I said, it's totally reasonable to get and you'll use it for all sorts of things. Cuddle as well as quilting and anything where you have thicker layers. All right? All right. All right. Whew. Now you know. Now you know. See? There's like a, some commercial from when I was a kid about, you know, the more you know. And I feel like it's the same way with sewing. The more you know and the more you understand about how they work. So all three of those different ways of doing it, the walking foot, well, four ways. Because there's the, the standard foot, the walking foot, the digital dual feed, and an even feed. And those all work differently. So they all, like many of the tools that we talk about, they each have their own place and what they're good for. And I find that the uh, even or the walking foot and the digital dual feed are great for working with cuddle and for thicker layers of cuddle. And the even feed and the regular straight stitch standard plate or standard foot is totally great for um, piecing and quilt making. So when you're using it for different things, you put on the right foot, use the right one. It'll make it all a lot easier. Um, and then do all the other things that we told you to do too. All right, <laughs> so there's lots of tricks for working with cuddle. Thank you for joining us today. We're very happy you are here to learn all about different feet that you can use for your machine. All right, so we will be back next week for more Sew Together Tuesday for our summer shorts. Thanks again to Patchwork Plus for letting us use your space and your machines. I appreciate it very much. Until next time, happy sewing.